Well, I recently sent this pamphlet, Theater of the Moment and Against Improvisation by Jack what, Wright, to my friend Jack, who's in jail. I photocopied this. I have not read it yet, and I'm going to read it aloud for something to do. Against Improvisation. Free improvisation has a bad name, or has a good name for the wrong reasons. It leads people to confuse their first thought with their deepest, to vaunt their surface as all that there is, nothing worth digging for. It stands for one-dimensionality, the easy passage of equivalent values which lose their character as values by their equivalents. As off-the-cuff or off-the-top-of-the-head, it intentionally avoids engagement between parts. It avoids conflict and union. In principle, it can't be complicated or ambivalent. can't deal with death or life or love. It's fun. Stop there. It connotes a cynical and superior posture of not caring, of sloppiness, lack of detail and choice, the bad boy we all love and patronize, the reverse, mirror image of the world of striving and perfection, especially in America it's held together with chewing gum and bailing wire, and cute for appearance. It is joined with pop culture, without sharing the rewards, in its function as liberation from the serious, from everything tainted with that dread disease seriousness. It is associated with the naturalism of chance operations and the conscious elimination of human agency, the reduction of the role of creator as ego-inspired and therefore corrupt. It has then some Zen moralism. If jazz improv is a music of romanticized personality, free improv carries the banner of rebellion against personality, against a music too well integrated, burdened with clear meanings that have become trite and nostalgic. It has barriers, not so much against composition, its supposed antipode as against congealed meaning and expression of the self. On guard against the old bugaboo of sentimentality. It can't imagine where real feeling could ever come from. Everything is in quotes. Feeling is reduced to emotion, which is excusable as the grease of live performance, a sop thrown into manifest commitment, but inessential to the music. It carries with it the illusion of the new, when it actually has really only eliminated repetition. The actual banality of one's playing is not under scrutiny and can easily become quite static and familiar. There is no compositional drawing board or canvas on which one can face one's inadequacies, make judgments, and change. What is there to study, to work out, to think about here? Practice, discipline, is the way to keep in shape, the same shape, not the way to challenge and face the shape and meaning of your own music and move yourself on. Free improv is the most instrument-centered music possible, yet it encourages a quite tangential and often hostile relation to the instrument as if it were merely an embodiment of past technique and social music school training to be discarded. This is the sad story, the sad irony, of an aged rebellion against sentimentality and form, the modernist rebellion that once promised so very much. In its own way, improvisation becomes the embodiment of style. There is no way in theory to force a separation of one piece or one moment from another. <coughs> <coughs> The playing never leaves the player. It is easier to change one's way of playing than to play a different piece, since there are no pieces. They went without masterpieces.
They went out with masterpieces. They went out without masterpieces. As listeners and consumers, we choose between styles as a matter of taste. Categories and subcategories, we take our music and block a background for our lifestyle and mood, a way of thinking without thinking. There is no meaning to this sound or that, no hierarchy, no mistakes, no gestalt, no indication of choice stronger than interest, not even the knife of pleasure to search out the morsel. It is the energy and not the tension and expectancy that makes us sweat. How can we feel loss? We are children watching children here, not limited by comprehension, not grabbed by any one thing, only teased by and awakened by the ostensible formlessness. Every time we are led to believe there is death or shade to any feeling or perception, it is washed away as chimerical. Improvisation says there is only surface or energy or interest. He wants to keep its freedom from statement, from commitment, as if it is afraid of a trap. Yet to an extent, when we listen to free improv, we are hearing a stance and an explicit theory about the value of impulsiveness. It plays duet with a perceived environment of social regimentation and individual lives. It is heard as a ritualized nose-thumbing at the musical canons as anti-art before it is heard as a fulfilling sensual intellectual ex experience. It has stagnated in its freedom because it does not know what it is to be free for. Released from a cage, this bird flies in circles. <coughs> this situation is his more historical than it is than it pretends. It represents the tale of the 60s anti-authoritarian rebellion in the arts, the wash away of form and sentiment that uh, experimental theater, dance, and free jazz music underwent at that time. It was a generation of clearing the decks, getting rid of all baggage, and was fueled by the broad-based attack on all social institutions. But improv found its home after the troops went home, after this project of rebellion was complete in the mid-late 70s. Unlike free jazz, which has always made clear its ties to the parent culture before it died, free improv has an ahistorical detachment that allowed it to cohabit with and appear to ignore the parents at the same time, and even spawn pop careers and leave the ghetto one career at a time. <coughs> but price of such safety is regulation to the cul-de-sac. Improv stays home and tends to the, to the communal farm as individuals leave. It continues as a testing ground for the greater cultural market, as a symbol for the above ground that there is something antisocial in our art community, even if we tell it to wait interminably for its stage cue. Free improvisation was a European experiment 20 or more years ago, for maybe 12 years now, it seems to have found its place. Its folk community is North America. Is it experimental in its present form? Does it probe music itself? Does it probe us? Is it truly the art of the unforeseen, the root meaning of the word? It become neither powerful nor was it crushed by repression. It has simply survived in its pigeonhole, relatively unchanged from its origins. It is a genre, an institution like experimental, which means a music that fits the category of known experimental music. In the past 20 years, the specialization and isolation of genres of music, especially the experimental, has created a culture with built-in insulation from the kind of shock and hurt that the dance, theater, and jazz audiences underwent in the 60s. 
that was the age of inoculation. There is no out music today, because what implies a rooting in and contention with what is in, a fight over something of value, not just the right to perform at all. Today you can physically do whatever you want in the arts. There is a place for everyone and everyone in their place. The fulfillment of pluralism and doing your thing. We are not free. We are free not to deal with whatever is outside our experience, throwing up an alternative stage for those who need it, complete with hush money from the government. This is not a time of shaking up in the arts. It, this is still consolidation, resting on laurels, accepting the boundaries that were new 20 years ago, living within that new system people still feel grateful for, that broke open the old. The social world on which art rests is entrenched, intact, well-guarded, and complacent. Any true experiment must draw new lines in the dirt, must step on some toes in a way that is not stylish. It must see the alienation of the experimental in our new post-60s system. It must see beyond the ghetto of free improvisation. Drive through the walls and accept the consequences. Hee <laughs> It must make promises it can't keep. It must not fear disruption. It must not buy or bargain its way out. The grayness of these days must be shaken into color by those with nothing to lose. Other writings and tapes available from Spring Garden Music. 3321 Spring Garden Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19104. Jack Wright, 685 Utica Avenue, Boulder, Colorado, 80304. There's a bit more in the middle there, but I'm going to stop now because I seem to be coughing. Oh. Anyway, that was fun. I hope it recorded.